here's one that if you have Amazon Prime, which is not free, uh, if you pay for Amazon Prime, this film, you can watch at no additional cost. This is a movie from 1973 or four, I believe, called Savage Sisters. This is a shot in the Philippines, female women in prison action movie. So you know it's good for the whole family. Um, that uh, also was released for a while. You know, Warner Archive does its uh, manufacturer on demand DVDs. And for a while, Sony was doing the same thing. And uh, MGM was also doing the same thing. So there is a DVD, I believe it's one of the MGM on demand discs of this movie. So if you want a physical copy, if you don't have Amazon Prime, but if you do, there's a nice widescreen copy of this film from the early 70s, released by American International Pictures, which, as I've said before, when I was a kid, these movies were all over TV. They were maybe about a decade old, if even that. And I saw them all the time on TV for free, and I really fell in love with this company that existed to create horror and action and exploitation and oddball movies aimed at drive-ins in the youth market. My father grew up in the 50s seeing these movies in theaters when they were, you know, I was a teenage werewolf and it conquered the world and, and uh, I was a teenage Frankenstein and stuff like that. So he said to me one day, you know, when you saw the American International movie, you just knew it was going to be garbage. It was just going to be terrible. And I always remembered that. And years later, it was totally the opposite for me. When I see the American International logo, I get a big smile on my face and I know that I'm in for a good time. And that is definitely true of Savage Sisters. What is it about? Well, it's about 93 minutes long, if I recall. Savage Sisters is basically three women discover a large amount of money is moving from point A to point B in the Philippines, and they want to get it before anybody else does. So you have the revolutionaries who want to get the, the, the rebels who want to get this money. You have a group of pirates or bandits led by a totally unhinged Sid Haig, who is just hilarious and ridiculous in this movie. Uh, his sidekick is Vic Diaz, by the way. So in case you were wondering, yes, it's a fil film in the Philippines that does have Vic Diaz in it, uh, which I think was a guarantee. Like, I think if somebody wanted to get a permit to shoot in Manila, they were like, is, is, so you've got Vic in this movie somewhere? Oh, sure we do. Go ahead. The streets are yours. Um, you have John Ashley, who is a name not a lot of people know. People my age would recognize his voice. John Ashley started sort of like a, a, a teen, teen idol or... Uh, teen movie star in, with AIP in the 50s. I believe he was the star of High School Caesar. He was in a lot of juvenile delinquent movies. He worked his way into the Beach Party movies. And then he went over to the Philippines and he started appearing in a lot of these uh, Eddie Romero, the Blood Island trilogy, Beast of the Yellow Knight, stuff like that. He is the, the first person you see in this movie is John Ashley with big old sideburns, a mustache, a leisure suit and surrounded by a woman in like a harem and he's going to narrate the story to you. It's, it sets the tone for what this movie is, which is not serious in the least bit. Um, John Ashley is sort of a hustler. He's trying to get this money. Uh, the military is trying to get this money. And then we have our, our heroic trio of uh, Gloria Hendry, who had just been in a couple years earlier. She'd been the, the Bond girl isn't quite the right word. She was sort of back to back and side to side with James Bond. Uh, in Live and Let Die. She was in some of the Fred Williamson action movies. She wound up being in Black Belt Jones. Um, you have Sherry Kafaro, who was in the sort of saucy, naughty ginger films about the female spy or, or private eye who always wound up tied up and slapped around a little, uh, but always got her man in the end. And then you had a, another actress whose name I keep forgetting, but she was a Filipino actress who was in a lot of films in the Philippines, but not many English language films. They band together to try to get this money, and everybody's after it. And it's it's wild and crazy. It's hilarious. I was laughing out loud a lot through this movie. The way Vic Diaz greets a young street urchin is something that should be in a lot of people's highlight reels, but probably isn't. Um, John Ashley, again, as this hustler, is hilarious. Uh, it's saucy, but it kind of goes out of its way to not show nudity, which I thought was surprising, because you get a lot of profanity you get a lot of violence, not gory, but a lot of people are shot and, and stabbed and whatever, um, but no nudity, which was odd. And especially interesting, you think, well, maybe they were trying to avoid getting an R rating, but there's F words aplenty, which back in this time was an immediate R rating. So I, I'm not sure why it worked out the way it did, but it's still fun. Uh, directed by Eddie Romero, who did a lot of these movies in this period, a lot of the women in prison movies and the, the Blood Island movie, uh, you know, Brides of Blood and Beast of Blood and Mad Doctor of Blood Island and all that stuff. It is just, it is junky fung. It, it moves right along. It has martial arts because of course it does. It's 1974. Uh, the clothes are outrageous. It does not take itself seriously at all. 
it has um, it, it's just everybody in it is, is, is a joy and it's a movie that I really really like I had the opportunity to see this at a drive-in a few years ago in an incomplete form and it was a, f a heck of a lot of fun to see in, it, in its natural habitat as I like to say but it looks really good on this Amazon Prime copy. I'm presuming that the source for this was the same as the MGM DVD, so either way, it's widescreen and it looks great. Um, it's not a movie that gets talked about very much for some reason. It fits into the women in prison genre because it's there for a bit of the film, but it's also not. It's reminiscent in some ways of Black Mama, White Mama, where you have the women who are talking about the revolution and fighting for what's right and all of that. Um, and, and, and breaking out of prison and going on the lam and trying to do something for the cause. Um, I like it better than some of the movies that are, excuse me, big breakfast, some of the movies that are often talked about, like The Big Bird Cage and The Big Dollhouse and, and things like that. Um, those get a lot of talk, but this one doesn't. This was kind of late in that cycle, but still, maybe it's because it hasn't been readily available on video that it hasn't been discussed very much, but I think it's worth your time. If you like weird exploitation, kind of R-rated movies from the 70s like I do, please watch Savage Sisters. I, and, and then let me know what you think, because maybe I'm crazy, but I had a really, really, really good time with it. So Savage Sisters, 1974, available now on Amazon Prime and DVD.